Okay, it's that SAT question again. Last time we just had to find one answer because that's what the SAT practice question was asking. But today we are going to find all the solutions. First, we may see that this right here is pretty bad because we have all the big powers. Pretty weird, right? But it's actually not so bad. So let's see. Right here, we'll just do the usual business. I'll just take extra third power. Oh, by the way, if you haven't done so already, please pause the video before you continue. You did? Good. All right, let's continue. Let's just multiply, multiply, and then we have x to the third power times x squared. We are going to add the exponents. 3 plus 2 is 5, so x to the fifth power. And then this times that is minus 5x to the third power. And that will be equal to negative 4x. Well, to solve this kind of equations, let's make one side equal to 0. Because usually, when we have a polynomial equation, we want to make one side equal to 0, and then the other side, we'll just try to factor it, if it's factorable. So move this to the other side. Here we will have x to the fifth power, minus 5x to the third power, and then it will be a plus 4x, and then that will be equal to 0. Now, this is actually called a quintic equation, because we have x to the fifth power, degree 5. But it's not so bad, because we can actually factor out completely. Because we see everybody has an x, so let's go ahead and factor that out. So put the x, and then all the powers will go down by 1. So we will have x to the fourth power, minus 5x squared, and then plus 4. No x, and that's equal to 0. And have a look right here. We have a trinomial, and in fact this is a quadratic trinomial, but in terms of x squared because this right here is x squared, squared. What I'm trying to say is that we can factor this by using the tic-tac-toe method. Let me show you. So let's go ahead and draw the tic-tac-toe boxes like this. First, we need x squared times x squared to get x to the fourth power. And then to get past d4, we are going to use minus 1 and minus 4. Let's double check. This times this gives us negative 4x squared, and then this times that does give us negative x squared, so together we do have that negative 5x squared. So this is the correct combination. So to continue, we have the x all the way in the front, and the next factor will be this and that, which is x squared minus 1. And then the next factor is x squared minus 4, and that will still be equal to 0. Whew, a lot of work. What's next? Well, in fact, we can keep factoring. This is the difference of two squares. Likewise, this is also a difference of two squares. So let's go ahead and bring this up. Still have the x all the way in the front. And then this is x squared minus 1 squared. So let me just write that down right here for you guys. So to factor that, we will get x minus 1 times x plus 1. The difference of two square formula. And we have another one for here. <laughs> this right here is x squared. And the 4 is the same as saying 2 squared. So it's a minus 2 squared. So to factor that, we get x minus 2 times x plus 2. And everybody at the end will be equal to 0. So now, what this means is that we're just going to set all the factors being equal to 0 individually and then solve it. So for the first one, x is equal to 0. And guess what we are done? Because x is by itself, it's equal to a number. Done. Next, we put x minus 1 to be 0, so that means x is equal to 1. And then perhaps I also write this down right here. I'll actually give it x plus 1 is equal to 0, x is equal to negative 1. And then x minus 2 equals 0, that means x is equal to 2. And lastly, x plus 2 equals 0, and x is equal to negative 2. So ladies and gentlemen, we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Five answers, right? And that's how you do this one. It's not so bad as I told you. If you guys want to see how to solve this, well, actually, how to get the how to get a correct answer for this question, check out my short video over there.